questions for Coach Patna? Rod, if you want to go start. Dave, when, uh, when you got the turnover from uh, Knight and sort of had maybe North Carolina back on their heels a little bit, did you feel that that was the perfect time to bring Sims in the game and maybe take it to him a little more? Yeah, I mean, we had a plan to, to get Jeff in the game in the first half. Um, and I was trying to, you know, try to find that piece of uh, when to get that done. We were thinking, you know, maybe third or fourth series, just ease him back in. Um, and I think the circumstance, you know, was right. We had, we had kind of held on to some of the quarterback run game stuff that we had planned on um, to try to spring that on him when Jeff went in there. And, you know, it just so happened that we call a draw and they all ran out like this and, and then he ran it in. And then from there, I think he got his feet under him um, and, and then, you know, played with a high level of confidence. And, um, and then, you know, we just got him rolling. And, uh, you know, I think, I think for his, you know, his development, I think being out for a couple weeks really gave him an opportunity to step back and see what's going on, watch what defenses are doing, see how to prepare, that type of thing. He was locked in at a game plan, ready to go. I think he had a great sense of, you know, who he was and what he wanted to do. He wasn't, he wasn't overstressed. You know, he was a lot looser, a lot more of his personality, ready to go. And then, you know, when you the first series, you go in there and you run in for a touchdown. It's a lot of fun. And then, I think the fun just kicked in, and he just went out and played. He didn't overthink a lot of things, just went on and, and played his game. Kelly? It seems like you guys have found kind of a nice uh, role for Dante. He's almost like a late reliever for you. Comes in the game, defense is softened up, and he's going 90 miles an hour. Kind of, is that something that you guys have consciously kind of decided to use him like that, or is that just something that evolved? Well, it's kind of based on the rotation too, you know. And, and he's, he's, the great thing is he's a starter on most teams. Right, so you have the ability to put two, three, four really good backs out there that can start anywhere in our league. And the great thing with him is he's so uh, full of energy, you know, that I think the, the the combination of playing with tempo and wearing on the defense, and all, you know, now those defensive guys' legs are a little heavier as you get into the middle of the game, um, and then he goes in and he's playing, you know, an electric pace. Um, you know, the combination of those two things are, you know, have been really beneficial for us. And, um, you know, I was standing right there when I said, there's no way he went down. Um, and, uh, you know, but he's just, you know, that role. And we've talked a bunch um, in the past about, you know, being able, being able to get a couple backs on the field. And we still, you know, we were in that package a little bit more. So his, the rotation kind of changes when you have, two backs in the game as opposed to just being one back and 11 personnel and, and that type of thing. So now you're mixing in more opportunities and, and guys, you know, getting winded a little bit and being able to sub guys in and out a little bit more. So um, it's definitely a, you know, great luxury, uh, luxury to have with him. Okay. Dave, you said last week about Jordan and Jeff that, you know, you two guys can do different, do different things and, and does, does what Jeff – did on Saturday, does that change kind of the, the calculus at all? And just kind of how do you go forward? Yeah, I think when, when you have four touchdowns and a half, it's a pretty good showing. Um, and, you know, I, I compliment Jordan for, you know, what how, how he handles his business and what he did. I mean, he went in and played, he went in and played really well. Um, and the greatest thing about that room, guys, is when Jordan was playing, Jeff was super enthusiastic about what was going on. And they're all ultimate competitors, right? Everybody wants to play. Um, but there couldn't be anybody that was happier for Jordan's success than Jeff was. When Jeff went in the game, and we had talked about it with the guys, you know, prior to the game, saying, listen, this is kind of what we're thinking, and, you know, Jordan, you're going to start, and Jeff, you're going to be in there at the second, third, fourth series, kind of figure it out. Um, when I went to Jordan on the sideline, I said, hey, Jeff's going in. We're going to try to get him rolling. He was like, cool, coach, I got you. you know? And then when Jeff started getting rolling, I mean, he was, he was you know, excited for him. And I think that that speaks to the chemistry of the guys in that room and really the chemistry of the team that, that Coach Collins is, 
has created. Like, guys genuinely want to play for each other. And, of course, if you're a competitor, you want to be out there playing. You know, I don't think that there's ever been a quarterback who thinks that the other guy who's playing is better than him, right? I never want you to have that mentality as a quarterback. I want you to have the mentality that you're the dude and, you know, you put me in and I'm going to play. And they have, you know, they both played well. Um, but I'm just, you know, the, the, the camaraderie and the support of the guys that are in that room has been, has been amazing. So, um, you know, I just love the culture that we're building in that room. Obviously, things are rolling for you guys on offense in this game. Um, and just comparing, you know, to your previous games where Clemson it was a little bit of a struggle, but you played great defense. What do you think your offense has learned that has helped them come along so far? Well, I would say that, you know, the thought process in the Clemson game was a lot different than the thought process in the UNC game, you know. The thought process in the Clemson game was, you know, take care of the ball, hang around, unbelievable defense, unbelievably talented defense, hang around, stay in it, you know, choke the clock, um, take your shots when you have them, um, and then kind of hang around and be in there at the end, which we were. Um, and in this game, we wanted to be a little bit more up tempo, a little bit more of a, you know, continue to have the mix. Because I do think that when you change your cadence and you change your tempo in the game, it changes how the defensive coordinator kind of plays. Because even when you just play up tempo every play, the defensive coordinator just he just has to snap and make a call. Um, when you come into the huddle, now you break, now you change the pace of the game a little bit. Um, I think that puts the defense a little bit more off balance because I think they get into a rhythm also. Um, so we did play with a little bit more tempo. Um, and then, you know what? I mean, ultimately, we made plays. You know, here's the deal. We didn't, we didn't turn the ball over, right? Um, our penalties are way down. Um, and when you, when you protect the ball and you um, don't hurt yourself, um, you're going to give yourself a chance to play at the highest level that you can play at. And really, when you look at it, and I told the guys this the other day, I said, listen, guys, we scored 40, 40, whatever it was, 42, 45 points, whatever it was. But we also kicked three field goals. So now you're looking at three, six, nine more points, right? And you're looking at 50-something points, 55 points against the number 20 team in the country. And we played good. But we didn't play our best game, you know. And so, you know, just that just has to be, be the mentality and the mindset that when you take care of the ball, right, and your playmakers make plays, and Jeff made some plays, but Jeff's not making those plays if we're not moving people up front. Or Malachi jumps over a guy in the end zone and makes a great catch or, you know. So that now just allows you to play up to your ability, you know, where you're not having to beat – yourself and the other team. And when we could do that, you know, we've we've showed that we could be pretty explosive. You know, everybody talks about Jeff's ability to run, his ability to throw the ball. It seems like he's made some good strides in ball handling, ball faking, that type of thing. What are you seeing from there? Yeah, I think you're right on point. You know, I think a lot of that is cohesiveness with the running back, a ton of work on it. Um, you know, a ton of coaching by Tashard um, on, you know, not only the running back and the quarterback, but that mesh and, you know, how, you know, footwork and, you know, how the ball has to be placed in. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, it's just not like you just go out there and like you're in the backyard and you just fake it and you run around. You know what I mean? There's a lot of pieces to that. But it's it's much more, uh, much more cohesive. Um, and I think that it's confidence too like the more you run that stuff like you know over the years we've run that play as our as our lead play so we probably would run that play 15 times a game um and so you're practicing it and practicing it and practicing it and you just it just becomes second nature um and now we're we're, we're starting to kind of get a better feel for that and not only the inside zone runs but the you know the speed sweeps and the flips and the 
you know, fake the flip and hand it off and all of the ball handling things that we're now able to do a little bit more of because we're just older and know more and we're more experienced and more confident. Um, and, um, you know, I think the one that we, the one that we really blew this year was the one that Jeff got hurt on, right? So I think he's, you know, uber conscious about making sure that that read is right and it's pocketed right and pulled right and, and that type of thing. And, you know, I, I do think when you have the backs that we have and you have a very athletic quarterback and you put those two guys back in there um, and the defense has to respect the fact that the quarterback will pull the ball, it changes the dynamic of the game. And that's what we were able to do on Saturday night. Got time for a couple more. We'll start with Ken. We'll come back over here to Kelly. You mentioned the field goals, and obviously, it's, you know, he scored 45 points. It's hard to find much to complain about. But you had the two first drives. You were first and goal in the 10, and the later, I think, it was first and goal in the five. What do you see in there, and how do you want to try to, you know, get get in the end zone? You know, we went back and watched all of that. I think as the as a coordinator, right? You're, t you're trying to take a global look at what's going right, what's going wrong, and it's very easy on the day that you score 40-something points, it's just, ah, kind of gloss it over. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay with this, we'll be okay with that. I think that's the time that you have to be hypercritical. You know, you have to be hypercritical with the staff. you got to be hypercritical with the calls, the preparation, the execution, and then you got to take that to the players in the meeting and say, listen, we did this well. We didn't do this well. This is why we didn't do it well. And um, so that's what we did. We went back and looked at it. Um, and what you're really trying to see is, is there execution in the plan? Is there predictability in the plan? Are you giving it to the running back enough? Are you play actioning enough? Are you drop backing and throwing it too much? Are you, you know, what's the plan? What are they defending? What are they seeing? What are they planning for? Um, so, you know, in a couple instances, you know, we, we fell off a block or we missed a cut or we missed a throw or whatever, you know, that type of thing. Um, and then we scrambled out. We had a hold, right, and that hurt us, knocked us back. Um, and so we're very fortunate that our kicking game is really solid. Um, but from a coordinator's standpoint, you know, that's not good enough. We want the kicker to go out there and kick PATs, not field goals. You know, so that's something that we have to work on, and uh, we have to be just a little bit more efficient on our third down stuff. You know, but those would be the two things that are most hypercritical right now. Yeah, I was just curious what you've seen from Pitt. Their defense is a lot different from a year ago. They lost some guys to the NFL, and just kind of what are you seeing? And they've also not played any common opponents that you got, you know, ACC, no ACC games or anything. Yeah. Is, does that make preparation a little different too? Not really. I mean, you know, if you look at Coach Narduzzi's defense over the years, it's very consistent. Um, I mean, they've been running that defense for years. Um, the kids know exactly where to fit everything. They're never in the wrong spot. Um, they know exactly what gap to be in. Um, they know exactly how they want to blitz, you know. So uh, their base defense is, is, you know, been in their base defense for years. They're going to play four down. They are really physical. Uh, they're fast on the edge. Um, they react to the ball very well. They run to the ball. They try to, you know, they try to thump you up when they when they get a shot at you. They play a ton of man. You know, the the corners are, you know, they're going to play bump and run the whole game. They don't play a whole lot of soft coverage. Um, and then they're going to challenge you to they're going to blitz you, and they're going to challenge you to find the open guys and they're gonna they don't just bring five right they bring six and they all pin their ears back and um you know if you pick it up you got a chance to find somebody right but they're banking on the fact that you're all in one-on-one -on -one block somebody's gonna get loose and the quarterback is gonna get thumped and you're not gonna be able to find the dead spots in the coverage enough um so i think from a preparation standpoint we know who they are um, we know who they want to be. It's, it's, it'll be interesting to see how they want to defend us with, you know, some of the quarterback run game stuff, or do they want to blitz you more than play coverage, or 
things like that. I mean, the first play of the game last year, you know, they came out and blitzed this on the first play and we threw a pick, right? And we had, they had never done that before, but they're probably saying, hey, they got a young cue. Let's try to rattle this cage. You know, to Jeff's um, credit, he kind of settled in and, and, and did a pretty good job the rest of the way. But that's really the thing is how much are they going to blitz? You know they're going to blitz. Um, but how much are they going to blitz and how much are they going to play coverage will be the interesting chess match early in the game on Saturday. All good? All right. Thanks, everybody.